methods of assessing non-cognitive dispositions and skills, student self-report questionnaires and surveys, and student self-assessment by Nathaniel Lucas. Student self-report questionnaires and surveys. In order to use self-report successfully, students must take the questionnaires seriously. To do this, students need to see that the questions they're being asked are relevant to them, that actions will be taken based on the results, and you want to help students understand that they have nothing to lose by answering these questions and something to actually gain by being cooperative in answering these questions. Another way to ensure successful use of self-reports is to use questions the students are willing and able to answer in a thoughtful manner so that you are getting the best possible answer you can out of them and can tell where they are in the material other than them faking an answer. And furthermore, to do this, the wording of the questions has to be precise. The format must be easy to understand and respond to and the response options must make sense to the students. That way they aren't confused on the answers. Question formats. Self-report questions can be in two different formats, just like assessments. Constructive response format is a straightforward way of asking students about their attitudes, feelings, and beliefs by having them respond to a simple statement or questions, such as incomplete sentences. Selected response format has many different types of questions when assessing non-cognitive targets, most of which create a scale that is used with statements about the target. Constructive response format. As previously stated, constructive response formats with the student questionnaires and surveys is a straightforward approach to asking students about their attitudes, feelings, and beliefs by having them respond to a simple statement or question. Incomplete sentences can be used often with this type of question format, and essay items can be used with older students and provide a more extensive and in-depth response than incomplete sentences usually do. An advantage of the incomplete sentences format, though, is that it taps whatever comes to mind from each student, and you're not cueing them about what to think or suggesting how they should respond so what you get is what is foremost and at the forefront of the student's mind. Of course, students still need to be able to read and write and take the task seriously, otherwise you're not going to get the best responses out of them that you can. And if you use this method, you have to be sure students are given enough time to think and write, and you need to encourage them to write as much as they can. Think about for each item. One disadvantage with this format, though, is even though the students are told their answers are anonymous, they may still be afraid of their handwriting being recognized and end up faking their responses, which is a concern because if then they end up faking their responses, you're not going to get the truth out of them and be able to properly assess them as you could if they were to tell the truth. The other disadvantage of this format is scoring the questions, and scoring questions of this type is more subjective than more traditional objective formats, but this approach offers an excellent way to get a general overview of student perspectives, feelings, and thoughts on the material. Moving on, selected response format. There are many different types of selected response formats to choose from when assessing non-cognitive targets and your students. And there's no single best response format when using this type of question, but you need to try and match the format with the trait you are trying to assess with your students. As mentioned before, most selected response formats create a scale that is used with statements concerning the trait that you are trying to assess with your students. One such scale that is used to assess attitudes is the Likert scale, and this scale can be adapted to almost any type of non-cognitive trait, so it is very versatile and can be very useful because of that. In this scale, students read statements and then record their agreement or disagreement with them according to a five-point scale. Yeah, the strongly agree, agree, undecided, disagree, or strongly disagree. 
Now, this isn't the only kind of scale under the Likert scale. There's a variety of different kinds of scales that I'm going to cover in the next few slides that are under the Likert scale and are adapted from it for this kind of format when doing student self-report questionnaires and surveys. Select a response format, continued. The statements that you ask your students with the five point scale are generated from your list of positive and negative behaviors or beliefs and are then put in a form that makes sense for the response scale. An advantage of using this format is that many statements like this can be presented on a page or two to assess a number of different attitudes efficiently and quickly. You can use the principle of the Likert scale to construct any number of different response formats. For younger students, the five-point scale is usually uh, cut down to three responses, those just being agree, unsure, or disagree, or even two, such as agree or disagree, yes or no, true or not to. And many self-report instruments use a Likert type scale that asks students to indicate how often they have engaged in specific behaviors or had particular thoughts. And these scales are easier to respond to because they are less abstract than the five point scales are. Another frequently used variation of the Likert scale is to ask students whether something is true for them. This can be a simple dichotomous item such as a true false statement or you can use a scale. Selected response format continued. In assessing self-efficacy, it is common to ask students how certain they are that they can do certain things. The text provides examples such as learn science, take good notes in class, organize work, understand if they study, or learn English. A scale to record responses like this could be from 1, not at all certain, to 10, very certain. And in some questionnaires, there are different scales for different items. In these types of formats, the scales are dependent on terminology and intent of each item. Sometimes the nature of the trait is named in the item, then the scale gives students choices. For other items, the scale defines the trait being measured. For young students, the response format is often in the form of faces rather than words. For classroom climate and value targets, self-report questionnaires often ask students to select from several options. The options refer to different traits or values rather than showing a range of the same trait. Interests are efficiently measured with checklists, rankings, or simple dichotomous choices. An advantage of selected response formats is that they make it easy to ensure anonymity. Anonymity is important when the traits are more personal, such as values and self-concept. It is also a more efficient way of collecting information. However, you don't want to ask too many questions just because it is efficient. It's best to keep self-report questionnaires short. Although you need more than a single item to reliably assess an effective trait, if you have too many items, students may lose their concentration and motivation to answer the items. Select only those traits that you will take action on. Don't you use items simply because it would be interesting to know what your students think. Moving right along to student self-assessment. Student self-assessment is a process in which students monitor and evaluate their learning and performance. Monitoring is an awareness of the thinking and learning strategies that are needed and actual performance. Evaluation involves making a judgment about the quality of their work and their progress toward targeted performance. Self-assessment engages students in self-observations and making judgments about their work and their progress toward targeted performance. And this aligns closely to what is emphasized in standards-based education because such thinking implies an understanding of performance targets and the criteria that are used to indicate success. Self-assessment is an excellent strategy for formative assessment as students get immediate feedback given by themselves based on specific aspects of their performance according to standards criteria and can then make adjustments to how and what they are learning. They improve their performance by taking responsibility for their own learning, gaining an understanding of their strengths and weaknesses. It empowers students to independently guide their own learning by using internal feedback to determine whether and when to seek assistance 
when to keep moving forward, and when to adapt new learning strategies to reach learning targets. Student self-assessment continued. The purpose of self-assessment is to involve students in the evaluation of their own work so immediate feedback can be incorporated and used to improve learning. The emphasis is on progress and mastery of knowledge and understanding, which increases confidence and motivation. Students learn to use assessment information to set performance goals, to make decisions about how to improve, to describe quality work, to communicate their progress toward meeting learning tar targets, and to develop metacognitive skills. Self-assessment enhances students' internal sense of control and fosters attributions to effort that strengthen persistence and perseverance. Successful student self-assessment has a multitude of positive benefits, as listed previously, but perhaps the most important that suggested by research anyway that self-assessment contributes to higher achievement, especially when students receive direct instruction on self-assessment. And theories from three areas of study provide support for self-assessment as a powerful source of learning, cognitive theories of learning and motivation, metacognition theory, and self-efficacy theory. Cognitive and constructivist theories of learning stress the importance of connecting new learning to what they already know and understand. Self-assessment helps this process by providing students with meaningful feedback that is based on criteria they have internalized. Rather than learning in a rote manner, students learn by constantly comparing their understandings with desired learning outcomes. The knowledge that is constructed is meaningful in the sense that it is in the context of students' existing knowledge. Student self-assessment continued. In Fredrickson and White's work, students use a process called reflective assessment. The purpose of reflective assessment is to develop students' metacognitive science inquiry knowledge. Students were taught to evaluate their work according to criteria representing higher level cognitive skills such as reasoning, being inventive, and being systematic. The students evaluated the scientific research they had conducted using these criteria on a five-point scale. They also wrote justifications for their ratings. From a motivational perspective, self-assessment is key to establishing a mastery goal orientation. And this type of motivation is based on improving knowledge, understanding, and skill, rather than on simply being successful with the outcome. Mastery goals require, to at least some extent, an internal processing of information, whereas for performance goal orientation, the monitoring and evaluation are external. Self-assessment contributes to mastery type or motivation by enabling students to know their progress toward full understanding. <coughs> Student self-assessment continued. Metacognition involves skills that are directly influenced by self-assessment. Both self-monitoring and self-evaluation are important metacognitive skills. Students learn to manage learning activities in time, check their understanding, and switch to different approaches to learning. They are taught to constantly monitor their progress as well as what is influencing their learning. Students learn how to form internal questions about their learning and performance to make decisions about what other learning is needed, and to be aware of projected learning plans are not resulting in satisfactory improvement. The emphasis, then, is on self-directed learning, which has powerful implications for motivation and positive attitudes toward learning. A key element in self-assessment is the development of students' reflective habits and skills and is best accomplished with a clear idea of what the habits and skills are and specific instruction in those dispositions. You will need to be very clear to students about your expectations for them to monitor their work and thinking and to be reflective about their work, describing what you expect them to do in terms they understand. Examples that illustrate the dispositions are also helpful. This may need to be very simple for some students. For example, students can be introduced to self-assessment by asking them to say whether answers to questions are correct or incorrect than answering a question like, why is the answer incorrect? Or what tells you specifically that it is incorrect? Or what can be done to have a correct answer? As students respond to these questions, 
Your focus should be on whether their answers reflect a willingness to apply what they know. So simply showing this kind of engagement needs to be recognized and rewarded. The goal of self-assessment is to empower students so that they can guide their own learning and internalize the criteria for judging success. This occurs when students first understand the criteria and then evaluate their progress toward attainment of specific achievement targets as they learn and to know what further learning is needed to reach the targets. Students give themselves meaningful feedback during instruction. This process is individualized for each student, allowing students to obtain specific information rather than relying on your general evaluative feedback for the class as a whole, which then can help motivate them to learn more with it being more individualized to them and what they need to know and what they need to learn the material better.